Hey everyone, I'm Alfred. Welcome back to Morrowind. I took a short break. I made myself some breakfast. I had some excellent spaghetti. And we are working on the main game. What do you think of our city, Outlander? My brother. That's a named one, not a normal ordinator, so I guess he doesn't give a shit. Alright, so yeah. Uh, last time was nothing but talking, and I nearly passed out from hunger because I uh, fasted yesterday. And when my window of being able to eat again... Citizen. Thank you. I've been out of mace for a little bit, you see. Had to pick one up. Uh, anyway, when my window of being able to eat again came, I was in the middle of recording. And then after that episode finished, I really wanted to go see Vivek. So I recorded that episode too. Um, but hey, we're coming up on the very end of the game. We have had to skirt around the interior of Red Mountain this whole time. You can see that I have almost nothing on the inside here. But we know that Dagothor is here and these two places are here. So we're coming at you. As you may be able to see, I named this save coming for you, Dagoth. I'm ready for you. Honestly, I could go fight Dagoth Ur right now. It's just that I have no way to cut off his immortality. Which is something that's really cool. Um... Take this example from uh, Skyrim again. There's no real reason that you can't kill Alduin. Um, give me to Balmora. Now you give me to Caldera. Uh, okay. Where's Caldera? That's Ghost. Hey, let's let's head to Ghost Gate from here. This is probably good enough. Always good to remember to use your resources, everyone. So yeah, um, a lot of the... Sorry, my brain's not working, as per usual. Um... But anyway, um, so yeah, I... I didn't eat when I should have, and now I have eaten and I feel good. Um, don't know if I'm fasting completely right. I guess I'll figure it out in a little bit. Remember to fast safely. Don't be a jackass. Remember to take care of your body as best you can. Um, I just happen to have a little practice with this sort of thing. Yeah, spear skills coming up. Hey, what's up? I can actually small this down. So yeah, I'm running out of the ability to even level up because so many of my good skills are very, very high. So I'm working on my little boy skills. Let's see, I could get... Probably six levels off of that, I think. Yeah, okay. If my spear skill just happened to become a hundred. You know, I'm not sure if I agree with the mechanic of... Um the different weapon attack types and like spears are best at poke and swords are best at swing and hammers are best at bashing but like it does make sense and it is it does give more variety because if you're just going to be doing one button clicking for attacks you may as well put some more stuff in there and granted there are games like devil may cry where you technically only have one button for your sword moves 
but they put a lot of cool stuff into it. So yeah, we've mentioned this. But minor issue with the ghost fence. It does not have a fucking roof. And cliff racers are goddamned everywhere. They are an epidemic into and of themselves. And they literally bring blight out through the top of it. What's more, the ash storms that come out of the top of Red Mountain also do this. It's a problem. It's a big fucking problem. Um... And the tribunal is uh, expending their strength on that. Presumably, however, it would be a whole lot worse if they didn't do this and, like, people could just walk through. They made this a triangle because, oh, it's the tribunal's power. Tickets. So, this is more or less that final dungeon area that you get to in all RPGs where it's like, oh, shit, you know? So everything in here is blighted, but... But first, the Tower of Dawn. We're just gonna explore around here. Is there something I can do? For Hello, you? Gillian of Pitchblend. Arch Cannon has announced that Lord Vivek has selected you as the champion of the temple in the war against Dagoth Ur. I'm very happy and will pray for you and the success of your quest. Can I help you? Are you looking for someone? Services? Yada yada yada. What can you give me? Uh, so, this is the only place in the game that you can buy uh, Indoril helmets. They also have the pauldrons. But because they're contraband, this is the only place that you can get the damn things. She has a bunch of relevant books, naturally. And this isn't actually useful now because we don't have the ability to get blight or any disease, but the healing stuff, and these are all big, big super guard things, because you know what? This is the last damn dungeon. We have all the way up to 6th and ninth barrier. We haven't even seen... Like, we've seen the 5th barrier, like, once. What's up? Citizen. Citizen. Is there something I can do for you, Outlander? Same deal. Got a bunch of goodies here. And all the restore stuff for us getting, uh... For us getting back to having, um... Like, in case we get cursed or something. What do you want? Let me see if there's anything I'm supposed to be talking to here. Oh, we've hit 200 pages as well. Can I save these? For God's sakes. You know, the last time I was expelled from the temple, it was because I murdered a bunch of cops in broad daylight in the middle of the prison. Now that's something that you can get expelled from fucking temple over. Not because you put your hand on somebody's bed and try to take a little nap. The nerve of them, honestly. I wonder the, why those are two separate cells. Book of Azura, naturally. And then a whole bunch of Book about the Tribunal. A bunch of the Lessons of Vivek, book about the Tribunal Saints, and a book on Omalexia, naturally. I can spare a few moments if you care to talk. What do you got for me? Armature is such a cool word. It's kind of a shame that it's associated with the word buoyant in this game, because that sounds rather silly. Sun and sky, Outlander. 
one lump. All right, just making sure. Uh, naturally, there are two towers because I'm in the Dawn Tower. There, of course, is a Dusk Tower. I just wanted to make sure that I'm in the right place. I'm not. But that's good because it means that... Just because... God, the fact that the sky has turned red when you're in here from all the ash is just so fucking ominous, huh? Tower of Dusk. We're looking for somebody relevant in here. Very relevant. So, all the shrines. We're... We don't really need these because we're really, really strong without them. But it's an okay place to get some extra power. Go on without you. Wait, did that send me back to... Ah, yes. Whoops. My lack of direction is still getting the better of me. Buoyant Armager. I talked about these in um, the 36 Lessons Breathing of the Vec that I read, there. but yeah, these are the boys. Don't I know you from somewhere? Uh, they're not Vivek's like hit squad. That's. Sun and sky. Do you have something to say? Oh, you got the Tajric Rage face. That's cool. I like that. They're not like the Ordinators. Ooh, spear went up. Good. Wait, which one is this? Fourteen. <laughs> yeah, that's that makes sense. Do you have something to say, Outland? So yeah, Boyne Armagers are more heroic friendly knights compared to the uh very grim ordinators. Scuttle. Tell your friends about this place. So one of the only uh non dark elves in here. This guy's name is Wolf, and he's wearing some high-tier legion shit. Hello, they call me Wolf. What brings you to Ghostgate? That's me. This is a hell of a place. Why are you here? Perhaps I should keep my business a secret, or... Uh, I'm on a quest. What a piece of luck. I'm an old legion veteran, as old as the poor old emperor, bless his soul. Too old for campaigning. Came this far to look at hell, but I can't go any further than this. Take it kindly if you'd carry this old lucky coin with you when you go up to Dagoth Ur. Sort of a token of the tough young hero I used to be. Did you do that for me? My mother never told me to accept gifts from strangers. I'll take your old lucky coin to Dagoth Ur with me. Very kind of you. Here's the coin. I've had it for a long time. It's always brought me luck. I have no use for it, and I'd like to pass it on to somebody younger. Somebody going places I can't go anymore. Your generation is a shaper of history, an engine of destiny. That coin will bring you luck on your mountain, I promise. For emperor and empire, as we say in the legions, go with Kinnereth. The emperor is getting old. So. Um. This man, Wolf, may or may not. He, so he he's just a weird old guy, right? Let me actually. Nobody in here like that I remember. Yeah, I don't remember any old Legion veterans here at all. Not in a very long time. I could be wrong, but I don't so think so. Good to see you. But he's standing right here. Nobody in here can see him except for us. Nobody remembers that he's here. Typically, you're supposed to leave and then come back and ask if uh, they've seen him. But um, it works while he's still in here. And what's more, if we leave, he should disappear. And not leave like we did. I mean disappear. Yep. And yeah, no one is able to see him except for us. And he gave us a power. Luck of the Ancestor. Luck of the Empire. Sorry, I read Ancestor Guardian. So, we got a power because we're born a Dark Elf. That is the power that we get. Because he gave us this random item, Old Man's Lucky Coin, which is, based on the model, identical to a regular Septum. It's just a penny. He gave us a regular penny. But for whatever reason, this penny that he gave us gave us a power. Not a spell, a power. We got this because of our birthright as a Dunmer. 
you only get those for very, very rare occasions. You do not get those for no reason. And yet this random guy just was able to give us a penny that uh, kitted us out. I'll leave these here and come back, actually. I do want to wear uh, glass armor. It's one of my favorite sets in this game. And look at it. It's great looking. Oh, it's a Serethi. Hi. Unfortunately, I can't ask him about uh, any other Serethis he might know, based on that name. Greetings, Outlander. Yeah, I love light armor. Um, it's my lowest... Yeah, I haven't been able to grind it as much as anything else. But I love light armor. I would love to... You bring me well, let me let me see outlander. here, actually. What, what is a good piece of light armor that I could put on? There's no escape! No. Expelled from House Rhetoran. Oh, well. You I can fix them up later. Are you... Let's talk about Wolf some more. Who the fuck is Wolf? Why can no one see him except for us? And why can he give us a power? This divine blessing, essentially. Um, There's a very good reason for this. Let me read from the wiki here. Um, he is actually a avatar of Tiber Septum. And you hear this from some rando in Ebonheart. If you go ask her about Wolf, it's like, oh, how do you know about that? That's one of the avatars of Tiber Septum. It feels strange, but I have a feeling I know this encounter has marked my fate and power. So recall that Tiber Septum was the emperor who cut a deal with Vivek. I get Numidium, you guys get Morrowind, and I keep the empire off of it to an extent. He later used Numidium to ascend to true godhood and became the eighth to ninth divine. Not the weird bullshit divinity that Vivek and the others have. Or even the weird lack of reality that you get from Dagoth Ur. Like, he became a real and proper, like, divine. Take that, Grandma Face. Man, you want to talk about ash wastes? This place is a shithole. Um, something talked about in Coda, the uh, essentially fan fiction that Michael Kirkbride wrote. Michael Kirkbride's the author of this game, and Coda's a fan fiction hero. Its canonicity is in question because the guy who wrote this wrote it, and the fic itself considers itself in canon. But obviously, Xenomax and Bethesda can't do anything about that fix, so it doesn't have to be canon if they don't do this. However, other things that um, Mr. Kirkbride wrote ended up in The Elder Scrolls. And the secret 37th lesson of Vivek, that's right, the secret 37th lesson of the 36 lessons of Vivek uh, contains a reference to... Um, to Coda, the thing that he wrote. It's spelled as C0DA. And there's a sentence in it that says, um, go here, world without wheel, charting zero deaths, and yada yada yada. And it is www.c0da.es, the website for Coda. Um... But in uh, Coda, Talos appears. It also turns out that Talos never existed, and he's actually just Lorcan, but he's also Tiber Septum, and it's, it's a whole fucking thing. 
But anyway, point of order is Talos is having the same problem that Vivek and the other gods and Daedra are having. He's lost interest with it. But Talos has interest in us. Tiber Septum has interest in us. He thinks we're interesting. Why? Well, it's probably because of the reasons I mentioned earlier. The gods don't get bored during um, the actual Elder Scrolls games that occur because every Elder Scrolls game is set in a very interesting time when a lot of different things are happening. Now, that's kind of a circular statement. Of course the game is set when a bunch of interesting things are happening, but what actually comes first? Is it the setting or is it the game? Does the game exist? And then a bunch of interesting things are made to happen during that game? Or does the setting exist and the game chooses to take place there? But yes, as I say, for whatever reason, he has taken an interest in us. So, Dagoth Ordos, that's the man. He's got a 6 health amulet. The amulet and his own key. And he's actually dressed like Dagoth Ur is. And a dead dreamer. Dagoth Ur and um, Vivek are actually dressed remarkably similar. One of the things is that Vivek just has his little piece of armor on. There it is. I discovered the Ancient Blade King. Let's take a look at this thing. Keening. Decent damage. Better damage than our um, Jinx Sword, actually. It fortifies our Magicka, Health, Attack, Agility, and Speed. But Keening has also dealt us a mortal wound, as you can see. And boy, does it. So, let's do this the right way. Wraith Guard. We can now hold the damn thing, and you can see that it's made out of a large gemstone. It's also a lot longer than you would really expect for anything of that type. However, unfortunately, we kind of rely on our uh, busted ass uh, thing gauntlet to help us carry all of the dumb things that I have in my inventory. So, ooh, 25 dormer points. It might honestly be possible to just sprint here and grab all these things at the start of the game, now that I think of it. I've got booze on me, right? I've got booze, right? Hmm, that ain't good. Only five pounds. Could get another ebony queer ass. Damn. All this money and I can't carry shit. One moment, everyone. All right, I've returned back to base. Dropped off some goodies, sold that ebony queer ass because I can get another one and I have a Daedric one at home. Um, took off my really heavy stuff. And uh, put on the helmet and these things from here. 
Now, I am going to... Now, take off... This. And I'm over encumbered. Um, so we're also going to ditch... The mace and the spear. And the axe. And you can see that now we're wearing this thing. And we can just use Keening. We have two of the three super important magical super artifacts. And we're just constantly burning with light. Look at how rad we look. Fuck yeah. Hey, what's up? I've become a demigod. How are you doing? Please take this stupid thing off of me. It served me well, but man, is it taking up space. Um, you got any, uh, anything else here for me? I'll take it. I must Stay say, I find you most you interesting like. right now. All right. This has been a good time for Mark slash Recall. See, on the one hand, I am already planning my next playthrough of this game. I'm... <laughs> in addition to seeing if you could do every stupid thing you do in this game in real life, I've been thinking about doing another playthrough of this game, right? But, like... I was thinking, what if I try to beat this game in one sitting? Wouldn't that be stupid? <laughs> like, I was just thinking about it. Like, the, the absolute oh, yeah. gall of trying to beat a Bethesda RPG in one sitting. And I know that plenty of people do that all the time. I don't. I wouldn't dream of it. Oh, yeah, by the way, what we're wearing, I finally put on that thing that I stole from uh, Talfir. At the time, I didn't put it on because I didn't have any need for it because of its uh, nature as light armor. And I was leveling a heavy armor. But now, you know what? Let's just rock with it, huh? Do it, do it, do it, do it. Don't drop with it. And I've also got my Redoran, uh, my Redoran gear on. And then some of the Daedric stuff. Uh, also stolen from a Mr. Fear. I am the horny police, if you think about it. Like, oh, you made a bunch of weird clones of your daughter to fuck? Pop! <laughs> Take that. My murder of uh, Divide Fear is recorded. Worry not. Uh, it's in one of the um, 36 Lessons of Vec episodes, I believe. So, be on the watch for that when it comes out. Some people love Divide Fear, and I think those people are nuts. That guy's a weirdo. Oh, hello. <laughs> Look at the list of things that are all on me. I have all these guards from Wraith Guard. You know what? I could actually just not teleport back home. That would be stupid. But considering we need to hop this fence anyway. Yes. Truly, my ascended short blade powers have finally made it. Oh yeah, and some danger starts spawning in here as well. Agrim Titan, no less. Yeah, and the guys in here can actually be pretty dangerous to deal with as well. Obviously, stuff on the world map shouldn't be the hardest thing in the world if you want someone to complete your game. But considering that this is a cordoned off section of the world map, the sky is red. It constantly storms with ash, and if you even step foot in here, you'll get the worst disease the world has ever known. I think it makes sense that we should be pretty hard. 
The inside can be bad too, but honestly, as you saw with the last one, it was just totally in and out, like, no problem. And I feel bad for schmucks like that. Like, all these people are turning into, like, super divine mega beasts hyped up on their corpus powers. And that guy's just like a regular Walking Dead type. Wow. You took a hit from Keening. You should count yourself lucky. Does this look like a screaming face to anyone else? Like, that's where the eyes would be on the helmet. That's a nose. anyone were to survive a couple of hits from Keening, it would be a demon. So, we should not be in here yet. We do not have all of the items required to proceed. Now, typically, that would be an annoying cliche. That, like, oh, you don't have your special plot coupons, can't come in here. In this specific case, I do not mind it as much for this reason. Because we are totally free to go in there anyway. But when the door locks behind us, and we don't have the special item that we need to kill Dagoth Ur, we just will not be able to kill him. And it is kind of funny, because he even mocks us. He's like, oh, you're a dumbass. You didn't bring Sunder with you. <laughs> what a fool you are. You know, that sort of thing. And then, it's almost an incentive to do it, because then you get more fun. Uh, dialogue from Mr. Uh, Dagon. What the hell happened here? So yeah, another thing that's a little annoying about enchanted items in Morrowind is that you will sometimes get these huge, just like super buffs blowing around you at all times. Man, that was a fucking death from above if ever I've seen one. Zaz. Oh yeah, Reflect and Shield are magical and melee protecting moves. Um, so we are just a lot tougher and more resilient just for having this thing on. What are we carrying? We're just carrying gold brand and shield. That makes sense. Some people consider um, Goldbrand to be the cannon sword of the Nerebarine. There's a couple reasons for that. Some of them, uh, some people say it's just because it's the best long sword in the game. And Nerevar is depicted as a long sword user. Um, he has a long sword specifically. Ooh, raw ebony. Ninety pounds of ebony ought to keep my speed up high. Still something of a fiend. So, why are so many ebony veins found around? Right. Well, time to get some ebony out of my pockets. How are we going to do that? You may be asking. We'll just swallow it. So, in the real world, ebony is a black wood. It's just a black type of wood. Maybe it's a petrified wood, but... You know, that's all it is. It's just black wood. Hence, why we call it ebony. A word that means very, very dark black. But most of the ebony mines found in Morrowind are found around Red Mountain. Now, it could be that ebony is a material that is very mountainous in nature. You know. The, uh, the virgins is... Wow, it's dark in here. Okay, I'll come back here when I can put on my good boy gauntlet again, because, wow, there's some goodies in here for real.
anyway, geologically, geologically speaking, one could argue ebony could only be created by the virgences in the, uh, you know, in the earth. Tectonic plates have mushed together to make a mountain. Well, the high pressure inside has created ebony. That's not actually the case as far as I'm concerned. I believe ebony is the blood of a certain god. And it would make sense considering his heart is now in the middle of Red Mountain and has been for a couple thousand years. So... What is blood associated with more, if not the heart? And so if Ebony is just the crystallized blood of one Lorcan, it would make sense as to why, one, it's smeared all across this world, and it's the strongest thing in it. Lorcan created this world and so has the most influence over it, but then is, himself is dead. But his body would still have that influence and would still be strong. Ooh, how many arrows? Stop looting, Alfred. You have to be able to carry a giant, super heavy hammer. I love seeing Dwemer desk. I thought that this was a key, and I was like, oh, I should grab that. back in. Oh, hello, sir. Pardon me. <clears throat> Dagoth Garel. You know, some people don't like that you can find repeats of certain names here. I think it makes it more realistic. That in this, um, you know, area, you would randomly just run into another guy with the last name Serethi, for example, is fun. I like that. It's imaginative um, and makes the world feel more lived in. There's this, um, there's this, I want to say it's a Tumblr post from Yongsa away. Discussing how in fantasy worlds everyone always has like a original fun name that no one's ever heard of And it might be more realistic for someone to instead be like What do you mean his name is Paith? There's like nine Paiths in my village alone Please help me, you know I love steel quarter kegs. They're so short and squat All cries are waking, whitest white of all whites, blackest black of all blacks, shame of sun, sun, and shadow, stronger than gods, brighter than mortals. Only he is awake, and only he is alive. He knows the names and the naming, he knows the wait and the waiting. He shines into every star and moon, he shines through their shadows. One shape, one spelling, one wraith, one casting. He is, from darkness he is armed, from light he is warded. He is all things, Drake, Lich, Theoman. On fires of river he comes forth. On storms of dreams he rides. With slivers of steel he pierces the heart. All spells, powers, curses broken. The chains are shattered. The scales far, fall away. I see with my eye and all is silence. I wake, I remember, Lord. Likely, uh... Religious exaltation of one Dagoth or... Yes, I enjoy um, seeing people with the same last name here. Yeah. Oh, uh, I'm looting him. 
Yes, of course. Got a little confused for a second there. Oop, we got a Daedra. Yeah. Man, Keening is a good, good weapon. I love that it feels way too long to be a dagger. But recall that the Dwemer were pretty tall. We've got another hype Dagoth priest here. Dagoth Vemin, the man himself. And Sunder. Fortifies strength by 20 points. It drains our fatigue by one point. Fortifies endurance and luck of all things. And you can see it's not a particularly fantastic looking hammer. It looks like this little mallet. You know, just like, dink. But on the other hand, maybe that makes sense. It's not a weapon, it's a tool. It's for building a god, yes, and for extracting the powers of the dead Demiurge's heart. But it's not like it needs to be this super awesome hammer. And so it glows because of the magic placed upon it, but it's not very special other than that. And yes, if you recall, there was meant to be a false sunder that you could find a fake copy of the hammer that would troll you, Dagothor would then kill you, and then they really didn't know what to do because, like, well, if you had saved and your only save was before fighting Dagoth, er, you'd kind of be boned. Like, what could you do? So where are we at? 42 minutes? Let's go get him. Bitches, bros, and non-binary hoes. Coming at ya. We are taking the fight to Dagoth, er. Finally. Now, this is something that I feel like maybe could have been handled a little better. I definitely like how with Skyrim you see Alduin. And he's a big fucking scary dragon. But the chaos he causes allows you to slip away without getting killed. It's something very ironic. Alduin is the dragon that ends up freeing you in the um, very well-known intro to the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. You're going to be executed for miscellaneous crimes because every Elder Scrolls protagonist starts as a prisoner. Um, Alduin's appearance, however, disrupts the trial and, you know, trial in terms of... <laughs> oh, right, yeah. <laughs> Set a reminder on my phone like, oh yeah, I am trying to fight this demigod, but... Anyway, with Alduin, at first you see him in the very beginning, and it's it's a cool intro, you know, the intro of Skyrim is well known and cool, everyone knows it, everyone's seen it a billion times by now, helped in no part, no small part by the, hey, you're finally awake means, but it is a good piece of character that Alduin's fury, rage, and impatience at attempting to kill one Dovahkiin is what causes him to let the Dovahkiin go free. The Dovahkiin would have been killed in completely mundane, normal, mortal ways. If not for his interference. But that's the thing about Alduin. He's very impatient. Alduin is a being that is part of the world. He's not not a part of it, like Dagoth is. Alduin is supposed to be there. The thing about Alduin is that he ends the world whenever the world's time is up. But he is also very impatient, and so is trying to do so too early. That's Alduin's problem. He's impatient. 
Still enemies, huh? Was it that guy? And again, Alduin's impatience shows up with how he's unable to kill uh, the Dovaki. But what's more, if instead of just racing around trying to get things done, Alduin would stop and fight the Dovahkiin and kill them, he would be able to continue on abate it. But he doesn't do this because, again, he's impatient. It's a good piece for the character, and I think it's well handled. But another thing about it is that the character of him, the character... Wow. What are you doing here? This is quite the place to pray, huh? Where is this? I know you gotta worship thy Daedra and shit, but like, damn, dog. Safekeeping. That's kind of fun. He had two common amulets, but he was only wearing one. That's kind of funny. Sorry, while trying to read and understand these things, I am less able to speak. Point of order. Alduin's impatience is a very good part of the character that has worked into it very, very well and elegantly. And it's something that I might prefer in Skyrim. Do you speak? Uh, I ran into this while I was um, doing stuff off screen, but some items are cursed. Which means that when you pick them up, they'll summon a Dramora Lord behind you. They're usually only found in here. And I don't even think they go into the stack like the other ones do. Yep. What if it works again? Any uh, But yes. The impatience of Alduin is, I think, very well handled. And very smart. I like it. Um, but one thing about Alduin specifically is that because of his impatience and how he keeps showing himself to the camera and the cast and the main character, you were able to get a feel for the character. This is something you don't get with Dagothur, and it's a damn shame because Dagothur is a fascinating character. Maybe even more so than Vivek. Um, and like, you get your little dreams of him, but you never even see a picture of him unless you Google him. And I feel like that's a little unfortunate. He's a really cool guy. And he doesn't afraid of anything. Um, on the other hand, it works to Dagoth Ur's credit. Any longtime followers of my channel know that I love Dagoth Ur and have done an impression of him in the past. Uh, specifically for the purpose of meme videos. Oh, it's wearing off. Uh oh. Oh, that's fine. All right, sorry. I had to go to the bathroom. I could have just stayed silent about that. Because no one would have ever known. Let's take a peek in here. 
Oh, we've been in. So you can see that even with all of our stuff maxed out, like this is possibly the best short play in the game. Where are you? Take off Endus. But yeah, with all the stuff in the game. Like, our our gear is pretty maxed out. We have what is probably, like, ooh, glass boots. I don't know what that <laughs> leaves my knees uncovered. All right, I'm going to need the matching pants because I'm going to look like a dummy if I wear those. So, Kagan Rex Journal. We don't know what it says, but. There were some tongs I saw. Here they are. Anyway, I was saying, we have um, what is possibly the best short blade in the game, and our short blade skill is at 100. And what determines it? Speed? What's that at? Oh, it's at above the cap. It's at 120. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, and yet we're not one hit killing everything in here because, man, this is the fucking, this is the challenge. This is, this is the hype, you know? Oh, good. I feel like I'm gonna have to go back to using like lower tier stuff to make the game a little easier on myself. Oh, here we go. Hey, yeah. Jeez. Tough guy. Yeah, so you found Kagan uh journal, and uh, we can't read it because we don't read. Dwemeris, I think the language is called. Oh, man. All right. Uh, I think that's everything in here. So all that we've got left is Dagoth or the mountain. And then Dagoth or the man himself. Um, which we will naturally do next episode. And, you know, I guess this would have been 50 episodes if I had uploaded them in 30 minutes, like I often would do for some wild fees. Acrobatics is hitting 90. Nice. So it is possible to play this game and get all of your skills up to 100. It just takes a long fucking time. Um... However, I believe once all of these skills are maxed out, you can't level up any further without hacking. Wow, this is steep. Can you walk up this way? Are you supposed to? I mean, I know by this point you're guaranteed, like, to have all of the, like, gliding flight abilities. Let's try this, actually. Well, it's a hammer. Oh, and it actually buffs our strength. Ooh, we're going to be able to carry so much if we just use Keening for everything. Or Sunder. Alright. I wonder how they made this picture of the sky. Maybe they edited, like, a real sky.
Please fall down, miscellaneous ghoul. All right. Dagoth Ur. You can see the power swirling around it. And yeah. We're coming up on the very end. It's been a long, 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 long journey. But we're coming up on it. I want to warn everyone, I haven't double-checked my schedule, but the video that comes out next may be... What is it here? Yeah, there's going to be a little bit in between here and the next episode. Um, just because I have a very busy July coming up. I have two games that I have really, really, really wanted to LP um, in July. And uh, so I kind of have to, you know, not fuck with the schedule a lot. But yeah, um, it's it's happening. We're beating Morrowind. Uh, I've been Alfred. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for coming by. Have a good day. Um, next one's probably going to be the finale, so be ready. Have a good day, everyone. Bye.